A Song to the Toot of Love by Etz Andershas Kingston on AO3. Episode 30. Chapter 8. Yes, Salman, we're back. Why do I get to be the butt of all the jokes? Kaminari asked. You do have a tendency to say what's on your mind without thinking it through. Madaria said with a light laugh. Says you. Fakigo said. Yeah! Kaminari cheered. You mumbled too much to point fingers. Jiro, sitting beside Kaminari, punched him in the shoulder. And you yelled too much, but we put up with you. He gasped. What? Specifically, Katsuki, Mina, Hanta, and Ijiro are just as loud. You, Katsuki, and Mina are the worst, though. Ashido gasped. My own girlfriend against me? Jiro looked around Kaminari, raised an eyebrow. Doesn't me putting up with you despite your volume mean more? That's what I'd like to think, Kirigiri said. Twice ran over, taking the seat next to Dobby as he tried to sit in it. What was that for? Dobby asked. Sit there, twice insisted. He pointed to the chair beside the newly acquainted one. Weirdo. Dobby mumbled. He sat down and looked across the table. Oh, wonderful. Shota gave him a weak smile. Hey. Hey. Dobby turned it twice. Whisper shouted, Now I've got to make eye contact with him the entire damn meal. I don't know him well enough for that. Brotherly bonding. Twice clapped his hands together. He had been in an endless good mood since they left their apartment. Hey. Fakuko said loudly, getting everyone's attention. I was a team with a freaky porter guy late to the damn dinner. I... Shigaraki paused. We walked. Why the fuck? I thought we walked because the reason was we couldn't portal or take the car. Dobby said. No one suggested it, so I figured it was out. No one asked me. Kirigiri said. I thought we decided on walking. You walked? Uraraka asked. You walked the entire 45-minute trip here? Twice nodded. We should have left sooner. You should have been smart. Fakiga replied. He sunk back into his chair. Dobby looked over at him. No one asked you, you rabid dog, looking self to speak. Fakiga laughed and tapped the side of his head. If you didn't fry our brains so bad, I'd have to turn to villainy. But you could have been one of those shitty underground stand-up comedian guys. Man. Dobby groaned. He looked back at Uraraka. You brought the muzzle, right? I think it's more likely to bite someone than Toga is. At least we know she's got her rabies shots. Spinner added. I think he might be filming at the mouth. Okay, okay. Uraraka said. Easy with the accusations. We take him to the vet yearly. Now, what's taking Imiko so long? No, no, no. Pakiko said. We aren't ignoring that fucking comment. What the hell is that supposed to mean, dumbass? Shota patted his shoulder. Down, boy. Luckily, he was able to freeze a wall between them before Bakugo sent an explosion his way. Shitty half and half. Don't even start. I'll be the number one hero after I beat Deku. I'm not some fucking dog. Bakugo growled. You're snarling, Sue said. Bakugo glared at her. Know the teasing comes from a place of genuine care, Majoria said. We couldn't be your friends without some good-natured... You're alive because di Ugh. Stupid Aizawa would murder me if I killed you, Bakugo said. He crossed his arms and leaned back. Got a goody-goody piece of broccoli on one side and a medical patch on the other. That's the spirit. Twice grinned. Go find your coin or something, Den. Bakugo sighed. Twice looked at him, confused. Bakugo refused to elaborate. Hey, Toga said. Uraraka felt an armor on her shoulder. What took you so long? Uraraka asked as she turned to look at her. 
Ah, for you, Toga declared. She pushed her pitcher into Toga's hand. Wildflowers were stuck at the top of it, forming a bouquet of bright purple, pinks, and yellows. I picked them while we were walking over and grabbed the vase from the kitchen. They're beautiful, Uraraka said. She sent Toga a smile, then leaned in to press a kiss to her cheek. I hope you asked if you could take this, though. I definitely did. Gudaraka sighed. Yeah, I thought so. Ready to sit down? Mm hmm. Hi, everyone. Toga shouted. She excitedly grabbed Gudaraka's hand and pulled her around the table to where they were sitting. Don't make me drop the present you just gave me. Sorry. She laughed. Put it down in the middle so everyone can see the pretty flowers. Gudaraka put them down between Twice and Jiro so they were near the center. She smiled softly as she adjusted them making the flowers stand up more. They were already chirping after their crude crudding, but Uraraka found the gesture touching nonetheless. She was glad Toga was at least waiting until after dinner to propose. Maybe then they could get out of this as gracefully as possible? Okay, come on, sometime today, Bakiko said. Quit rushing them. Midori elbowed him. He turned to him, spoke quietly. It's their party. Don't make them kick you out. You'll miss all the fun stuff. Bakugo grumbled, a mess of curses, but remained quiet after. Fun stuff. He mocked in a whisper, like sitting around and talking. Once they were all properly seated, something that took much longer than anticipated, the waiter entered the room. It was a waiter who had become the League's regular waiter a young person with a quirk that caused wolf ears to sprout at the top of their head. Hey, you guys ready to order? They asked. A plethora of answers were thrown towards the poor waiter. Ah, uh, okay? They nodded. I got absolutely none of that. Bakugo raised his voice, despite it being silent in the room. I want Undo, he said. When he added nothing else, Karagiri glared over at him. That's impolite. Huh? Bakugo said. He narrowed his eyes at the Miss Man. I'll show you in polite. He stood up, knocking his chair over in the process. His hands flew from his side, jutting out to point to Kirigiri. Sparks flickered and was quickly eaten up by a purple portal. I'm afraid you already have, Kirigiri said. Then there was a tail sound of explosions from the room beside theirs, followed by screams. Ah. I forgot there were children in there. Majoria was the one. Up from the table, he ran next door, checking on the people in the room. No one else, not even Bakiko, moved for a moment. Everything was set back into motion when Udaraka jumped up and ran after Midoriya. Stupid fucking portal. Bakugo hissed. He snatched a chair off the ground and sat back down with a huff. If you hurt someone, they would have called us. As you got lucky, dumbass. The pair were gone for a few minutes, leaving the group to glare at each other. All clear. Midoriya sighed as he came back in. The kids left already. It was just the adults cleaning up the party. They don't warrant any worry. Karagiri asked. You just scared them. No one was hurt. Uraraka finished. She walked in behind him. Doesn't mean you two should be doing that, though. Kirigiri carefully adjusted a sleeve of his shirt. It was self-defense. Blame your hot-headed friend. Like you guys aren't hot-headed. Kaminari folded his arms. You can't just jump on him for it. Have any of us exploded anything yet? Dobby asked. He looked more bored than anything, like he was going to consider it. Yet? Ashido asked. No blowing things up, Sue said. Where is that warning for Katsuki? Toga asked. Or does the pro hero get a special privilege? He doesn't. Uraraka said sharply. She looked over at Bakugo. Don't blow people up. You don't either. She was glaring at Dobby now. We should just quit arguing and eat. Yeah? Everyone is hungry? Yeah, Midoriya said. Good idea. Could you bump that up to two undones, please? He asked the waiter. Sure. Yeah, I... Is it 
going to be like that last time I came back here? No, of course not. Uraka smiled sweetly at them. Right, everyone? Mix asters came in response. Midoriya's chipper, we'll try, followed by Sue's, maybe, were among the most positive. The fact that those were the positive ones, like, those were the positive ones. The maybe and of course. I... <laughs> Uh, also, yeah, uh, favoritism, uh, who was, no one was telling Bakugo to not explode things, so, um, yeah. Um, I don't really have much to say, except Uraraka being like, okay, great, Toga saving it for after the dinner. Um, actually, about that, n none of you guys are proposing today. You, you, miscommunication, pew pew, miscommunication, pew pew. Uh, I'm glad that this is never gonna happen with, uh, with me and my partner, because we will extensively talk about it, like, hey, are we ready? We are ready, okay, then let's start, you know. And like, we'll know that it's gonna happen before it happens, so it won't be that whole, oh, are they gonna propose? Oh, they're gonna propose. And then the other one thinks that I'm gonna propose. Nope, nope, that's not happening. Not happening. Uh, what is gonna happen is gonna be like, oh, is this the moment? Oh, this isn't the moment, okay. But like, we know it's gonna happen, right? It's not of a, oh, they're gonna propose today. It's like, they can propose today or it could be tomorrow. We're doing something really romantic and we just had that talk. So, you know, kind of situation, you know? Uh, so it's gonna be less of a surprise, uh, which I mean, I don't mind. We both don't mind. We, we've talked about this and stuff like that, but yeah. Anyways, I found this chapter to be nice. I cannot wait for everything to go down. Uh, hopefully it won't be too angsty. I don't think it will, but yeah. As always, my rain drops, make sure to eat, sleep, drink water, take your meds. Have a wonderful day or night. Link to my Discord server and socials are down in the description. Subscribe to see more of my content and thank you so much for watching.